Welcome to our webinar, Reading is Understanding, A Deeper Look at Comprehension in ASD. My name is Patty Crum, and I am currently a Title I teacher for reading. I have over 13 years experience working with students with ASD and intellectual disabilities, with four of those years dedicated to reading instruction. I'm Dorothy Waddell. I'm a certified reading specialist. I um, have been s serving students with disabilities for 15 years. The last 10 have been dedicated to uh, increasing the literacy skills of students with autism. Reading is a fundamental part of our daily lives. Just take a minute and imagine what your world would be like if you did not understand the words you were reading. How would your life be different? Would you have the same opportunities? Do you know any children that may be able to read words but have difficulty understanding the text on a deeper level? For many students with ASD, reading is a challenge. Although often able to uh, uh, decode words, comprehending the text or expressing what they understand may prove difficult. In this webcast, we will discuss the importance of comprehension, look at the challenges faced by students with ASD in the area of literacy, discuss the role assessment plays in planning instruction, as well as share some assessment strategies that we found to be helpful. We will also show you instructional practices and comprehension strategies that can be used to instruct verbal and nonverbal students with ASD. First, let's take a good look at what good readers typically do to gain meaning from text. When you and I read, we engage in many strategies you see on the slide without even realizing it. For example, when I picked up a magazine, uh, latest issue of a gardening magazine last week, I flipped through the pages and saw an article titled, titled Fall for Muscadins. I immediately made a text-to-self connection, thinking, these are the kind of grapes that I uh, s tasted for the first time at the farmer's market last month. I activate my prior knowledge, remembering that they are a delicious, tough-skinned grape that is, uh, grows primarily in the south. I predict from the title that they are probably harvested in late summer or fall. And since they are in this magazine, I may be able to grow them myself. I decide I must read to find out. I infer that the author used the word fall in the title to express that we fall in love with muscadins because they're so delicious. And the article describes muscad muscadins by stating, Late summer days bring vines filled with muscadins, their perfume sweetening the air. And I use my senses and visualize the vines heavy with fruit, and I can imagine their sweet scent. In my mind, I can see exactly where I'll plant them in my garden, and I start reading about the different varieties, and I start questioning, hmm, which ones would I like to eat? Which ones would I like best? Is there a type that's best suited to my needs? Because I want to eat the ones that I can eat, get right off the vine. Um, I also read that some of the varieties are self-fruitful, and I'm not sure what that means. So I decide to read further to see if there are any clues to help me clarify the definition. I conclude that self-fruitful means self-pollinating, and I will only need one plant, not two, to bear fruit. At the end of the article, I summarize what I read in my mind. Good readers use these strategies without much effort. For struggling readers, including many readers with ASD, comprehension is a challenge. And many of these strategies may need to be explicitly taught. Keep in mind that every reader is different, and therefore so are their strengths and needs. A child with ASD may exhibit some developmental differences that can affect their grasp of comprehension and literacy. In the area of socialization, shared enjoyment, imitative play, and joint attention are all related to comprehension and literacy. When a child has a limited range of social experiences, it can narrow their knowledge of the world around them. This includes their vocabulary, imagination, and perspective taking. In regard to restrictive interest and repetitive behaviors, individuals with ASD often have a more narrow range of interest and tend to focus repetitively within one or more of those subject areas. This can limit the general knowledge, range of vocabulary, 
experiences, and concepts which affect reading comprehension. Communication and language consists of speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Students with ASD often struggle in the areas of communication and language. Some areas of difficulty include oral language, receptive and expressive vocabulary, recognizing nonverbal language, auditory processing delays, and the literal interpretation of language. Delays in language development can affect comprehension at the word, sentence, and text level. The three areas on the right side of the screen are cognitive models often related to higher level thinking. Let's take a look at executive functioning, central coherence theory, and theory of mind, and how they affect comprehension in students with ASD. A person with a strong theory of mind can imagine what is, it is like to walk in someone else's shoes. The ability to understand the perspectives and intentions of others and read emotions is crucial in understanding stories. Someone with a weak theory of mind has difficulty understanding perspectives other than their own. They may believe, if I can't see you, you can't see me. It affects his ability to use knowledge from experiences along with cues from the text to infer what is not directly stated. He may find it difficult to understand the motivations of the characters and predict their behavior as well as understand the intention of the author to inform, entertain, or persuade his readers. Next, let's discuss executive functioning, which is the process of organizing, planning, and monitoring progress when presented with a situation. While reading, this is demonstrated by the reader monitoring for meaning and being able to read for a purpose. Working memory is the thinking skill that focuses on memory and action, which is the ability to remember and use relevant information while in the middle of an activity. Focus assists in reading comprehension by helping the reader to attend to a variety of tasks that are required while reading. Studies indicate that struggling readers may experience executive functioning difficulties in verbal working memory and focus. Someone with impaired executive functioning skills may also find it difficult to access prior knowledge to make text-to-self and text-to-text -text connections, summarize text, monitor for meaning, and understand cause and effect. Further, someone experiencing difficulties in this area may find it hard to have consistent discussions with teachers and peers regarding the text. The next model is central coherence theory, which is the ability to bring multiple details into one whole concept. For example, someone with a strong central coherence, looking at this picture, would see the forest. In terms of literacy, it is being able to understand the overall theme or purpose of the text being read. Someone with a weak central coherence may have difficulty creating mental images, summarizing text, and accessing and building background knowledge. They may also have difficulty with the main idea of a text. For example, someone with a weak central coherence looking at a picture of a forest would only see a whole lot of individual trees. Each student should be assessed to determine an individualized instructional plan. Assessment is important to help identify any deficits in their reading subskills, to determine a student's independent instructional and frustration levels, and to differentiate instruction as not all students with ASD will have the same strengths and needs. Assessments are also helpful in determining if a student is comprehending what is read, or rather, if a student displays signs of hyperlexia. Hyperlexia is where one has exceptional reading abilities that are above what they are actually comprehending. Um, to explain, think of a student who can read words in isolation on an eighth grade level but only comprehends the meaning of the text at a first grade level. It is important to remember that an instructional reading level is accuracy plus comprehension. As a frame of reference, an instructional level is typically 90 to 95 percent of the words read correctly combined with comprehending 70 percent or more of what is read. 
Students with language difficulties and nonverbal students can be assessed for comprehension skills by using visual supports, written words, and graphic organizers to determine their understanding of what is being read. Nonverbal does not equal non-reader. Also be aware that, there, that although a student may have good decoding and fluency skills and is able to recall concrete facts through short, limited responses, they still may have deficits in comprehension skills. When using an informal inventory, you should always try to implement it as designed. However, if your student is unsuccessful, there are ways to adapt the assessment to try to obtain a more accurate reading level of your student. Let's talk further about some of these assessment strategies. Technology-based assessment could be assistive technology or classroom technology. Assistive technology is when a student needs a specific type of technology to reach learning outcomes. Classroom technology is when the student will benefit from the technology but can function without it. Review each student's IEP and discuss with the IEP team what, if any, technology adaptations could or should be made. A PowerPoint is one way to use technology to assess comprehension of a nonverbal student. Answer choices could be placed in each quadrant and the student can respond to the teacher's questions by pointing or eye gaze. The types and format of questions you present to the student could include closed sentences, closed sentences or passages, and multiple choice questions. If you utilize multiple choice questions, it is important to remember to include choices that make the student think critically. Some visual presentation adaptations include showing written directions as you read them to the student and limiting the text field the student is reading. Here's a sample of a teacher writing the question as she is asking it. This may help with a student who is having auditory processing difficulties. For our population with ASD, processing written language may be easier than processing oral language. Here is an, an example of a student using a blank sheet of paper to limit his reading field and to help visually track each sentence as he reads. Using individualized explicit instructions as well as the use of visual supports such as graphic organizers and pictures are other promising practices that help with reading comprehension. These supports can be used during retelling to help the student visually organize their thoughts. We have found that presenting a graphic organizer during retelling can make the significant difference for some students. We believe that literacy instruction for students with ASB should be balanced, explicit, and systematic. Basic reading instruction includes the following ingredients, phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary development, fluency, and comprehension strategies. And it's important that we directly teach what good readers do to our readers that struggle. When selecting techniques and strategies, we must base them on the age and ability of the students we are teaching. Students with ASD often have splinter skills, so there may be some important sub-skills that need to be developed. In order to find out, it is key to assess the students in areas considered to be kindergarten or emergent level, even if they're reading on a higher level. We want re our re students to be experts in reading, and in order to do so, so they must have sufficient time in the day to have qu dedicated to quality literacy instruction. This slide shows instructional practices that are recommended when teaching students with ASD. And it's important that we use explicit instruction to clearly show step by step what we want our students to learn. During modeling, use a think about loud to describe your thought process. Um, and while doing so, use simple, complete, clear sentences. Um, teaching using theme-based stories are also helpful. Um, it allows the reader to build background knowledge and it just sets up a nice setup for text-to-text uh, -text connections. We want to differentiate our instruction um, to meet the needs of each student. And we can do this by making sure to use visual supports that best reach our students. Here you see objects, photos, text, or graphic organizers. And visuals can also be used for nonverbal students for communication. 
The following steps have been found to be effective in assisting students with ASD to improve their literacy skills and comprehension when reading text. First, we have assess and build prior knowledge, con uh, create mental images, make connections, and engage in consistent discussions and summarize understanding. Let's take a look closer look at each step. So before reading, we want to access that prior knowledge. We want to prime or prepare our students with information prior to reading. According to Wahlberg in 2001, readers with ASD need numerous cues prior to reading to access their prior knowledge. Prior to reading the book, The Invention with a Thousand Uses that you can see on the screen, we primed the students in multiple ways. We clarified the title by rewriting it to make it more concrete and pre-taught vocabulary from the text. We supported the vocabulary with visuals, uh, with visual supports. In the slide, you can see we used a photo of a duck and a photo of some duct tape. Bringing a roll of duct tape to the, that the students can examine is also recommended. Um, we, create pri we created primer passages to read and summarize prior to the actual reading. Um, we will describe the process for primer passages with more detail later in this webinar. Before reading, we also want to create mental images. The next thing we do is we, we did a picture walk and look through the pages of the book. And we stopped at specific points and talked about important pictures and headings. During reading, we used a Venn diagram to help make text-to-self connections. Text-to-self connections can be very difficult with students with ASD to grasp. So the use of a graphic organizer can help illustrate the connection better visually. You could also use photos or objects during this activity if needed. After reading, engage in a discussion during closed reading to using an adapted version of reciprocal questioning. The teacher models asking and answering a question related to the text. And in this case, the question would be about duct tape. Um, the teacher says, what was the book about? And then the teacher answers the many uses of duct tape. And then the student would ask and answer the same question. We would repeat this process with different questions about the text we just read. After reading, summarize what was read by stating the main idea. This is often also difficult for our students. To help with this process, you might want to use a whiteboard and a dry erase marker to write down the questions. What was the main idea of the book we just read? Or even for more clarity, you could write uh, using the title. What was the main idea of the book, An Invention with a Thousand Uses? Model stating the main idea using a think aloud and next ask the students to tell the main idea. If finding that the main idea is too difficult at first, you might want to start by asking what did you learn or what happened in the text story and then move to telling about the main idea. Um, if they have difficulty, even start, you know, start teaching the main idea using a paragraph format. You could write all the sentences uh, of the paragraph on separate strips. And then you want to read the paragraph, remove a sentence, and reread. And you would continue this process until you find that one sentence that uh, makes the paragraph ho have cohesion and meaning. Let's take a look at some additional strategies and practices that are found to be helpful with students with a weak theory of mind. Using thought bubbles is a really promising way to depict the thoughts of others. And the bubbles can be used to help students better understand the thoughts of the, of the characters in the story. Role playing with figures allows us to recreate the story with a hands-on approach um, and act out the interactions and take on the perspectives of the characters. We did this with a book with some stu a student that had a low level, or had difficulty um, expressing what he understood. So we made the, all the pieces of the story and he was able to act it out and retell the story that way. So that was very effective. Um, expand students' vocabulary knowledge. It's recommended that vocabulary is ex instruction is explicit and taught prior to the reading. You can teach connotation and word choice to help students learn about implied meaning and inference at a word level. 
You can determine the author's purpose or intention. And this can be related to word choices or connotations made by the author. Or you could use a strategy like Pi um, to decide the author's purpose to persuade, entertain, or uh, inform the readers. Explicit instruction in idioms helps students discriminate between literal and figurative meaning of idioms found in text. And then we can also teach inference using pictures. So you would start at a very basic level using a picture that shows a simple, common situation. For example, you could show a picture of a student wearing rubber boots, a slicker, and an umbrella. What can we infer? It's raining. Predicting what comes next is another strategy, and it's similar to drawing inferences um, using pictures. In this activity, you would present the student with a two-dimensional um, scenario, like a child with a baseball and a bat, and then you would ask, what comes next? And what's this child going to do? And if needed, provide a field of selections that the child could choose from. Once mastered, you could provide opportunities for the child to predict what comes next in daily activities, and then you can move to predicting about stories. So we're going to explore two of these strategies a little more deeply. Let's look at this one. This activity focuses on the explicit instruction of idioms. And an idiom is an expression that doesn't mean what it is literally stating. For example, a piece of cake means something is easy. But readers with ASD often take idioms literally, and in this instance, perhaps instead just labeling, thinking that you're labeling a piece of cake. So when a reader comes across an idiom, they must take into consideration what the author intended and decide if they take the words literally or not. Students with weak theory of mind find this to be quite difficult because they must understand the thoughts of others, and in this case, it's the thought of the author. So first, let's talk about the types of idioms. There are two. There's transparent and opaque. Transparent idioms are easier because the meaning is closer to the actual interpretation of the words. For instance, hit the nail on the head, as you can see on the slide. Whereas an opaque idiom doesn't have much to do with the meaning. For example, um, telling someone they have a green thumb. When teaching, start with the transparent idioms. And think of ones that are frequently used in text, in your speech, and reading that you select. Make sure they are current. You don't want to uh, expose to outdated idioms. And you can find lists for appropriate idioms online. Um, idioms should be taught on a regular basis over a period of time to help reinforce the learning. And then the activity on the slide shows how to compare the literal meaning of the idiom to the figurative one. Have the students write the literal meaning, followed by the figure of interpretation, and then draw a picture for each. And at first, this should be done as a shared activity with the teacher modeling um, to better to help students learn how to correctly interpret idioms. Be sure to model looking in the text for the clues in order to guess the meaning prior to looking for the real meaning intended by the author. According to Norbury in 2004, there is a positive relationship between comprehension of idioms and academic achievement. Let's, this is one of my favorites. This activity focuses on expansion of vocabulary using connotations. Synonyms can have subtle implied meanings, which are really difficult for our students uh, with ASD to interpret. And they, therefore, they must be explicitly taught. Um, they want to, you want to teach the unstated meaning and the emotions behind the word. And understanding these connotations assists with inference at a word level. And it also leads to understanding what the author's intent when you're looking at specific words. In order to make uh, this concept of connotations visible and concrete, use paint sample strips to illustrate the shades of meaning. And the great thing is they're free. <laughs> you can get them very easily. Start with a key word, um, and here we started with uh, happy, um, and we picked four synonyms for happy. On the slide, you see we used glad, delighted, ecstatic, and content. So you're going to explain all the, what the words mean, essentially the same thing, but that there is hidden meaning behind the words. 
And these de words describe a range from someone who is somewhat happy to someone who is extremely happy. Point out along this range examples that your students could relate to, because you definitely want to bring it back to their experiences. Demonstrate how to rank the words in the order of intensity. And remember that the order of intensity may be different for different people, and that's OK. Next, write them in order of inten with intensity going from the lightest to the darkest. And then you're going to explain that connotations refer to the feelings behind the word, like a secret meaning, and describe how you rank them. Then you want to repeat this activity um, with synonyms at, from high interest activities. Uh, and once they understand the concept, then you can move to uh, connotative, or uh, you can select connotative synonyms from grade level and reading level texts. Some executive functioning strategies and practices include anaphoric cueing, which is relating pronouns back to previously stated texts. It helps with monitoring for meaning. Reciprocal questioning is where the teacher and students take turns asking questions about the text. Graphic organizers are useful in making connections such as text to self and text to text. Questioning strategies include think alouds where the teacher models what good readers do. Discussion groups, which can be paired reading or small groups, along with peer tutoring, are also promising practices. Let's take a look more closely at two of these strategies. Anaphoric cueing is an evidence-based strategy where the student is taught by a visual cue to identify words in the text that reference words that were previously used in the same text, which is anaphoria. Pronouns are common anaphoras referencing a person who was discussed earlier in the text. Teachers should teach anaphoric cueing by showing students how to pause at a pronoun and then relate those words back to their original reference. To illustrate, let me reference the slide. Lula was in reading class. When the fire alarm sounded, she stood up, she walked to the exit, and she left the building. Who is the author referring to with the word she? Yes, the pronouns are referring to Lulu, who was stated earlier in the text. Anaphoric cueing helps improve comprehension by teaching the student to monitor for meaning and for understanding, to question the text, and to ask and answer who questions. It may also help with the understanding and use of pronouns in spoken language. Reciprocal questioning is an effective strategy that teaches students how to identify main ideas, engage in metacognitive thought, and to think critically while reading. Initially, it is an interaction between the teacher and the students. However, as the student begins to master the strategy, students will begin to work independently in pairs. For the students become independent, reciprocal questioning should be used and modeled often. Let's talk about the teaching steps for the strategy. To prepare, select a well-structured text for the lesson, read it carefully, and then prepare and write down possible questions before the lesson. Explain to the students that they're going to practice ask, asking questions while they read. Tell them that while you read the first sentence of paragraph, they're then going to think about a question for them to ask you regarding the text. Tell them after you answer their question, it'll be your turn to ask a question in which they will then answer. Model by reading the first sentence of paragraph of the article orally as the students follow along. Tell the students to ask questions about the reading. Answer the student questions carefully using a think aloud. Use these questions as guidelines as you think aloud. Did you use your background knowledge? Did you know it from another text or reading? Was it answered in the text? Did I combine what I read in the text with something I already know? A think aloud might sound something like, the answer is blank. I know this because I just read an article in the newspaper last week about blank. Next, ask the students a question about the sentence or paragraph. In the beginning, you will need to coach the students to clarify. Use questions such as, why do you think that? Can you elaborate? Tell me more. Can you give me an example? Continue this proce process moving through the text. The skills of picking main ideas, 
engaging in metacognitive thought, and thinking critically cannot be mastered in a short period of time. Therefore, much guidance and many experiences are needed for students to reach mastery. Once the students are beginning to grasp the strategy, pair the students to try it on their own. Tell the students to read the first paragraph and have one student ask a question. The other student answers the question to the best of his or her ability. Remind the students to clarify their answers. Have the students write down the questions. After the first paragraph, pull the class back together and tell the students to share their questions. At this point, you are assessing the quality of the questions to know if the students are ready to continue on their own. If they are, allow them to con continue for two or so more paragraphs. If they're not asking good questions, then continue as a class and model. As the students begin to approach mastery, allow them to work in pairs on an article or text in order to practice the strategy. Nonverbal students can participate by answering and asking questions using visuals specific to the text. Other options are writing or typing. Central coherence theory strategies and practices include primer passages, which are used to help build background knowledge and to help create an understanding of the main elements of a story. Creating mental images may help a student with ASD to understand literal and non-literal constructs. This can be accomplished by picture walks, drawings, and by using plays and movies. Priming with visual supports can be used to help pre-teach vocabulary as well. Teaching text structure is helpful in teaching the student to understand what the author is trying to convey in writing. Let us look closer at two of these strategies and promising practices. Another evidence-based strategy is the use of primer passages. Think of a primer passage as the first code of understanding. If read prior to the reading selection, it may help build background knowledge by providing a brief summary of the basic facts to help create concrete understanding of the main elements of the story. Clarifying central concepts and identifying key vocabulary in a concise manner ahead of time primes the reader to have a better understanding of the material, it lessens anxiety and promotes predictability and student success. A lesson sample would be that the teacher should prepare a short passage on transparency, whiteboard, or a smartboard ahead of time that includes the central concepts and key vocabulary. The teacher and the student would read the passage together. As the students identify key words, the teacher would underline them. As a group, clarify the meaning of the words. The group then develops and writes a one or two sentence summary of the passage that includes the key words. Visual supports help a student with ASD understand literal and non-literal constructs. Mental imagery is a promising practice that uses visual supports. One way to teach creating mental images is by using movie scripts. Movie script reading is helpful in teaching students to visualize what characters and scenes look like, to teach predicting, questioning, visualization, and characterization. It also teaches point of view, irony, and fluency. Some resources are the imsdb.com and simplyscripts.com. Another way is to show the movie or parts of the movie before you read the book or the chapter. Viewing movies prior to reading can help build background knowledge, helping the student make connections as they later read the text. To teach using this, you would watch a scene and then read the corresponding chapter. Discuss how the filmmaker used imagery to describe the author's words. You would then use a think aloud to compare what you had envisioned to what imagery was actually used. Then have the students make a similar comparison. Have students draw, draw either a scene from the film or have them draw two pictures comparing description in the book to what was depicted in the film. Then have the students discuss their drawings with the staff or peers. Help students to connect the activity by stating they should try to connect um, by making mental images while reading as if they were going to make their own movie. 
The teacher should then lead a discussion about the filmmaker's imagery versus the student's imagery. This will help with perspective taking, author's intent, theory of mind, and cognitive flexibility. For a list of children's books that have been made into feature films, you could visit wikipedia.org. We hope that you gain further knowledge by joining us today. We want you to leave with some additional understandings about the strategies good readers use, the challenges faced by students with ASD in terms of comprehension, and some practices you can use to help them become better readers. Assessment is key to finding your student's specific reading level, as well as his strengths and needs. From there, you can tailor your instruction. Focus in using recommended practices in teaching literacy along with uh, specific activities to help meet the challenges your students may face concerning cognitive models. Our goal was to share what we have learned about comprehension and ASD in order to help our student population. We want them to learn to comprehend text on a deeper level and thus expand their opportunities in education and in the world around them. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions about what you saw in this webinar, please contact us.